Hey, how's it going? Hope you guys are all having a good day. So, we're doing a Bible study today, and I will be reading out of the New King James Version, and we will be reading John chapter 15, and how I will do this is I will, I will read the verses we're going to cover today, and I think we're only going to cover... three to five verses. I have five written down. We'll try to push for five verses. I will read them and then we will go back through. Uh, I've come up with some questions that you might possibly ask depending on where you're at in your walk or if you are not on your walk and you want to know more or are curious about uh, being a Christian, uh, there are some questions, and I will answer those questions for you. And we will go through references and scriptures that tie in and uh, back up the scriptures we go through. Most of them we will cover... The other ones, there's a couple I'll just give to you. You could stop this video and go and uh, look them up, follow along. Uh, I know one off the top of my head, Psalms 91. We're not going to cover that, but when we get to that, you can uh, stop, pause this video, go check that out, and then uh, continue on with the video. So let's jump into this. So it says, uh, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So there's our five verses. Now we will go back through and we'll break them down. Now, if you're curious and you don't know, you might ask, who's the vine? Who, who's the vine? The vine is Jesus. That's God the Son. The second part to verse 1 is, who or what is a vine dresser? A vine dresser or... Um, a farmer so now we have God the Father so we have the vine is Jesus and the vine dresser or farmer is God in verse 2 it says every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may be bear more fruit so right there that might not sound good as we hear that because if you're pruning a vine or a branch it seems like you're taking away from it well in this version of the new king james it has an a next to away in verse two does not bear fruit, he takes away. Down at the bottom of the page, it says, or lifts up. So it's not really taking away, it's lifting up. Now think of a plant. Now we're, 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 we're uh, for the gardeners that are following along. Think of a plant and, um, you know, it's one of the branches is laying on the ground or something. You're going to prop that branch up. 
right? So it means to lift up, cares for, props up off the ground. So he lifts you off the ground. A father that never gives up. A father that never gives up. That's what that's saying. He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Now we're pruning. That it may bear more fruit. So your second question might be, what does it mean to prune the branches that produce more fruit? That produce fruit to produce even more fruit. What does that mean? So if you actually look that up, it says it improves the health of a branch. It stimulates growth. Uh, so it produces more and larger fruit. And you control the size and shape of the vine or plant. Uh, and it's for aesthetic purposes to create a desired shape or look. Now, Jesus speaks in these parables so he can relate to the people at these times. You know, we're talking about farmers and uh, herders, people that, you know, that was a way of life. That's what they did. People, if, you know, you know, the Sermon on the Mount, people were uh, can relate to the stuff he was talking about because they're woodworkers. You know, they're, they're uh, farmers and, and, and herders and stuff like that. That's how he spoke so people can relate and understand what he's saying so the last part of that we were talking about the aesthetic purpose to create a desired shape or look so this is the first this is the first one we're going to go you could pause the video and we're going to go to romans chapter 8 verse 29 Now it says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The brethren, that's, that's, that's us. Jesus was the firstborn, you know, of all of us brothers and sisters. And the plan is to get us conformed to the image of his son, to his likeness. That's what that's talking about. That is the aesthetic purpose, you know. Now, it's growth, it's personal growth. That is the more and larger fruit. Control the size and shape, that's the aesthetic. It improves our health. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, now, as we continue on, you can also follow this. We're not gonna go there. In this one, but you can go to Colossians 3 4 and Hebrews 2 11, also along with uh, uh, Romans 8 and 29 that we touched on. But now we're going to go to uh, verse 3. We're going to read that. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Okay. So your question to that is what does Jesus mean? by we are already cleaned by the word which he has spoken to us. When we follow his teachings, the word, it's transforming us as we walk in his truths. Uh, and it's working in us for that transformation. When he says you are already clean, Clean meaning uh, washed or cleansed. That's in the blood of Christ. That's Ephesians. Where there's there's three of them, but we're gonna go to Ephesians chapter one verse seven. In Him we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So we're talking about being cleansed. We have redemption. You know, uh, Romans 3 and 23. 
We're all sinners. We all fall short. But we have redemption. And uh, according to the riches of his grace. So it's by God's grace. And what Jesus did for us. Now there was a second part to that, which we will get into. Another part to that, which we will get into. So we are cleaned by the word which he spoke to us. When we follow his teachings, the word, and it's transforming us as we walk in his truth. So that transforming part. If we go to Romans, this is where you pause the video. If you go to Romans chapter 12, 12 verse 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that is the will of for our life. Okay. Now. Being cleansed. If we also go. To Psalms 23. Verse 2. And 5. It's only 6 verses. I recommend reading it. In verse 2, it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. His truths, His word, it has already cleansed us. He, Jesus, is our shepherd. He provides for us. The second part of verse 1 is, I shall not want. The second part, that's the provision part right there is I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd means that's guidance, protection. Verse 2 is the healing part. Through understand and walking that out, that's the transforming. And it's working in us. That's the healing part. It's working, doing a work in us. That's the healing Okay, now think of anxiety and depression, what's th what that does to us, being separated from the Father. Okay, he makes us, him leading us, he makes us lie down in green pastures. That's soothing and calm. He leads me besides, beside the steel waters. Very calming, very peaceful. Now, when we get into the fruits, you're gonna, that's going to make even more sense. Okay, now as you as you walk as you go through this, when you get to uh, verse five in Psalms twenty three, it says, "You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies." So that's provision, even when surrounded by the enemy. You anoint my head with oil; my cup runs over. How can you have anxiety and depression if your cup is already full with the word? If, you're, if your cup is already full of the word and you're abiding in him, which we'll get into in a minute, that means you're overflowing. My cup is overflowing with God's love, his peace, and his joy. You know, there's more. We'll get into that as we get into verse 4 and 5. Now, let's actually go back to John and read verse 4. And it says... Abide in me, so there's the word again, abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So those are instructions right there. Plain as day instructions. Now, the word abide. Now, like I said, Psalms 91, you can go read Psalms 91. You can pause right now and read. It's a promise. Promises to abiding. But the actual word abiding, there's a definition in the Bible. There's probably quite a few, but one that uh, really stands out, stands out is in Acts chapter 11, verse 23. And it reads, it's Barnabas. And it's the second part of this. 
When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. So right there, you're dwelling in the Lord. You're abiding to remain connected uh, to Jesus and his teachings. It's what we just read following his teachings uh, that we read in verse 3. And without the vine, the branch is nothing. It's a committed relationship. So, verse 5. Jesus is going to explain everything we just read, and the foundation of everything was in verse 2. But now he's going to explain everything we just did in verse 5. And it says, I am the vine. So he says right there, I am the vine. You, us, are the branches. He who abides, dwells, that committed relationship, remains connected to his teachings that we followed in verse 3. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. So he tells you about the fruit that was talked about in verse 2. He explains, you're now producing fruit. That's how you produce fruit. For without me, he's saying, without me, the vine, you can do nothing. So, what does it mean when Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing? That right there is talking about dependency. Being a dependent. Now think about a small child depending on a father or a mother or a guardian to take care of them and feed them. You know, they have needs they, they, you know, that they need to live. Now we have God who looks after us. Now that's the whole Psalms uh, 23, if, if you had read that. Now he says, the branch, us, is nothing without the vine, Jesus, without the branch being connected to the vine, it cannot produce fruit. It will just be a branch. Now, remember when I read that, remember what we read in verse 2 about him propping up the branches, never giving up on us, right? He lifts us up. It sounds bad for him to take away, but it means to lift up, cares for, props up off the ground. I don't know about you, but when I came to Christ, I was broken. I was broken and I was on the ground and he picked me back up and sat me down and he fixed me. I was broken and he's caring for that branch that's connected to the vine. A father that never gives up, that is love. That's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let's go there. So I missed it. I forgot to put it in, but in verse 5, when it says, Without me, you can do nothing. When I was talking about dependency and a child needing a parent and then providing uh, food and sustenance for them, well, uh, like it says in Psalms uh, 23 about him being our provider, um, you know, we also need spiritual food. And that spiritual food can be found out, uh, read about in Matthew chapter 4, verse uh, 1 to 4. You, uh, you can read about Jesus, um, his time in the desert. And him using scripture against the deceiver. And which is the New Testament version of Deuteronomy 8.3. Which uh, we shall not uh, eat on bread alone. Uh, but you can also take it to John chapter 4. Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman. And in 13... Whoever drinks from the wa uh, from this water will thirst again. Talking about uh, Jacob's well. The sun coming through. Uh, Jacob's well. 
they will thirst again. But in 14, it says, but whoever drinks from the water that I shall give them will never thirst. But the water that I shall give them will become in, in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So that's what I forgot to put in there. And that he provides that for us also, which is part of our cup running over. And the healing that we get from living a life connected to him through abiding and walking in his word and transforming us. That was the Romans 12, uh, being the transformation we go through, 12, 2. Uh, that's what I forgot to put in there. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that's a father that never gives up. That's what true love really is. Okay. So, in verse 5, we have Jesus saying, I am the vine, we are the branches. In verse 1, we found out that God the Father is the vine dresser or the farmer. But it's talking about fruit. The fruit that was discussed in verse 2 now is being talked about again in verse 5. Now let's actually go to Galatians chapter 5. Okay, let's start. We're gonna we're gonna read verse 25 first. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Okay, so it's talking about the spirit. Now in verse 22 and 23, you know, we were talking about our cup overflowing also. You know, the healing of that, of the anxiety and depression that this world offers us. Yeah. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Okay. Okay. When we're born again, that means you are, you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your body becomes a temple, it becomes a temple for the Holy Spirit. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of you, our body being that temple, talked about in. John chapter 2, verse 21, which I will read. But he was speaking of the temple of his, of his body. So actually, if we go back, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up again. I will raise it up again. Then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. Talking about the death the burial and resurrection of Christ. And Jesus was talking about, but he was, in verse 21 it says, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. So our body, you can also read this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, which let's actually uh, go there real quick. First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have 
uh, from God and you are not your own. So we were purchased. So we have Galatians 5.25, Galatians 5, the fruits of the Spirit, which is a part of our cup running over, the love, joy, and the peace, which gives us when our cup's overflowing and we're walking in that Spirit, producing those fruits in our lives, that's the characteristics that we gain from that, being in the likeness of His Son, Lord Jesus. We don't have any room in our cup for anxiety and depression. That's healing. Now, 23 minutes. Uh, we're going to stop right there. We'll find out in verse 6 in the next video I do. Uh, probably do like 6 to 9, so it's not going to be a 24, 5-minute video. But uh, Ephesians 1, 7, when we read that, the other verses to that, the cleansing is Revelations 1 5 and Hebrews 9 14. But I hope this was a blessing. I hope you learned something. Uh, this has definitely been a blessing to me. God is good all the time. Uh, he loves you. I love you. Peace out.